So, hi, Jason. Um, what was your first computer? My first computer, uh, that one, I remember, right, was an old 8086. Um, we got that back in the the late 80s, Okay. If I remember correctly. Yep. And, and why you and got it? It's very... Uh, why did we get that? Um, I don't remember why. I know it, dad had a, he bought a computer for some reason. And then we, uh, we upgraded to a, a 286 mm -hmm. and then a 386 and a 486 and a Pentium. And, you know, it just kind of went up from there. But so, the, the first one was a, an old 8086. So, um, your dad wanted to have the computer and you just had the opportunity to play with it or right. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Okay. So um you you preferred games? Uh yeah, that's that's kind of how I got started. Um I remember looking at the uh the old GW basic games. Um one of them, let's see. The one that started that kicked it all off was called um Snake. Gorillas. No, it was Gorillas. Gorillas, okay. Yeah, it was Gorillas. <laughs> uh Snake was also on there. Um but I I was more interested in, in Gorillas and very quickly found the source code for that and was very enamored with the fact that I could actually read how they created the game and see what was going on with that. And things just took off from there. Okay. But, um, I mean, if you are into games, right. And, um, so, so, so you launch a game and, and enjoy the game. Um, how you get the idea that you will actually get a sort, you can get a source code to modify the game, you know? Um, I, I don't remember what it was that prompted me to type in edit uh, gorillas dot basic or GWB, whatever the file name was. I don't remember. Um, but you know, I, I loaded it up in the, the edit command from DOS and all of a sudden here's this big long list of text that was fairly human readable. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. What is this? You know, and then I had to start looking up, um, basic and I had another friend that was also interested in to, in computer programming. And I got the, the giant thick GW basic book, you know, mm -hmm. from, from Microsoft and, Started teaching myself basic off of that. Okay, so I get. So how how it happens? So in one point of time you get a bit bored probably. So you try discovering you know the file system and you find accidentally some stuff and you look on that. So okay, okay be, become curious and then how it starts usually right. Yep, yep, that's exactly how it happened. Okay, so and uh, how you started to program something? So you, you play games. What what's 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 a little bit different? Basic games. So what I, I had in ZX Spectrum earlier than you, but there were no basic games, basically. I had the real games, you know. So um, were ah. you games delivered with source code? So you just run the games in interpreted mode? So what means GW basic games? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so ba basic is a, another uh, computer language yeah. that's, you know, it's it's really old and it's fully interpreted or yeah. at least GW basic was. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, I don't remember the command to actually run it. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but it was, you know, you, you run the game and it interprets the, the, uh, the program and runs it all off of that. And from there I went on to the, okay, how do I do stuff? And it was the, you know, you kind of went through the whole basic, like hello world thing, you know, 10 print. Yeah. Hello world. And yeah, there you go. And we, we were off to the races. Yeah. Because I also started with basic. I could run, you know, the scripts, but games were loaded. So my games were loaded from tape to the machine and I could, ah. you know, so there was no, there was a, so usually basic was, you know, if I created something by myself, I have the basic or I had to type something from, from a magazine. So I got the, you mm -hmm. know, the program, but games were compiled. I think they were in a program in assembler or whatever. So this would made me okay. curious. The, the first time I, I heard about uh, basic games. So, so you got the source code somehow and you run the source code. Yeah, right? uh, I think I think the source code came with whichever the flavor of DOS was that we were running. Three or four, I think. Okay. At that point in time. Okay. Yeah. And it, it shipped with just the, the basic source. So so you started with basic, right? Yes. So what you did, you what was your first, you know, achievement? Um outside of Hello World and just basic uh colors. Um what was it? Oh I don't remember. I don't remember a whole lot of the basic stuff because I, I went from basic fairly quickly to, um, <laughs> to Java of all things. Oh, really? Um, and yeah, I ended up getting a uh, teach yourself job in 21 days, uh, back in 95, 96, something like that. And then progressed <laughs> through the whole book 
and went uh, went through that and ended up doing things you know like uh, command line applications applets. Was so. it the yellow book? There was like you know the oh the, the yellow books in twenty one something. So and there's yes yeah it, yep it was a yellow book yep okay and and now it is even 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 more interesting. So you you, you had some programming skills with uh, basic and you wanted to learn Java. Why this? Uh, I think Java was just the the next one that was available at the uh, the public library for whatever reason, or it just screamed out to me. I don't remember there being a, a massive pull. Just you know, at, at the library there was a, a small computer section, and it was a teach yourself this programming language in twenty oh one days. And I thought, sure, why not? But the sure why not is uh, is this even uh, how 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 old were you back then, roughly? Um, so let's see. Basic was when I was. 11 i started looking at java um 12 and 13 yeah but this is amazing and yeah and then after java that was after java was about the time i started getting into the good old dhtml stuff okay. from uh netscape okay and but there are not, not too many you know not too many 12 years old who are walking into a library pick a book teach yourself 21 something you know <laughs> go out and 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 learn it so it was still, you know, your motivation was still somehow interesting because with 12, it's unusual to just pick a book and start, you know, hacking with it. So sure, sure. Uh, I'd always loved reading anyway. Okay. Um, and com computers had just been been one of those things that I just kind of gravitated towards as, as soon as we had that, that first one. Okay. You know, it was, so you were, it was great. And, and why you were yeah. so fascinated by the computers? W w about you were more fascinated about the hardware, about you know the software or gaming or what? Why? So why you like? Computers? Um, I, th I think it was the the software, the the idea that I could well, I, the the interaction, right? The interaction of the software and the hardware. Mm -hmm. The the idea that I could take something that I thought up and tell the computer to do something and have it kick back a result. Okay. Um, I found to be very very fascinating to me. Okay, cool. So you started... Uh, and it, okay. it was a lot easier than telling people what to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, at the beginning, probably not, but uh, at one point of time, it is easier, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, so you started Java. So um, you liked it, the book or Java experience or, I mean, 21 I, I did. I did. I, I, I enjoyed the Java experience. Um, I think one of the things about uh, Java that caught on to me very early on, uh, especially more in the um, the applet the idea that, that they were touting was the the idea that I could put something out on the internet um, and then someone could visit the web page, pull base, essentially pull down the, the program and run it themselves on their own machine. I thought was a really cool idea. Okay. And and you, it took 21 days to learn this or longer? Uh, the basic stuff was 21 days. Yeah. Okay, cool. It, yep. it was actually... And, and then unfortunately... Yeah? I, sorry. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do much with Java past that for a while. Um, that was, uh, let's see, that was right about the time I was entering um, middle school here in the States. Okay. And then we had a, uh, a C++ uh, class okay. in eighth and ninth grade okay. that I took. So I, I was doing C++ from that time forward until about um, university. Okay. Which city was it with the library, you know? The historic city. Uh, what city was the library in? That would have been the hometown that I grew up in, in Riverton, Utah. On oh, Utah, okay. Oh, yep. there was an um, attendee for from the Airhex workshops, also from Utah, and he came to Munich, and so you know the uh, Christmas market in Munich, and he was really fascinated by the glowing wine, and he tried to replicate this experience in Utah. And he sent me back pictures, whether it looks right. So like, okay, it looks good, but I have no idea how it tastes, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. But Utah is a nice place, right? Lots of nature. and um, it, it is, yeah. We, we definitely have a lot of nature. Um, lots of stuff all, all throughout the, the year. You know, there's um, skiing, snowboarding during the wintertime, um, camping, hiking, fishing, biking for basically the rest of the year. Yeah, hey, cool. And you still, yeah. you know, preferred the 21 days with a yellow book. <laughs> <laughs> At that point in time, I did, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, unfortunately, uh, you started with C++, right? Or, I mean, unfortunately, it's because uh, you lost a little bit of time. You know, you, you learned Java, and then you start, started over with C++, right? And uh, Yeah, I, it, it was mostly um, 
at, at that point in time, I, at least, you know, to a, uh, a 14, 15 year old Java was not, um, as accessible okay. as some of the other stuff. Um, it, at the, uh, the middle school level, you know, they, they have the compilers and everything you use at school. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I remember the teacher having a, uh, he had worked a deal or something where some of us could, could go in and get a copy of, um, Code Warrior, if you remember that. Code uh, Warrior, yes. Um, yeah, from a long time ago. Um, and that one interested me not only because it did C++, so I could do it at home, but it also included a Java compiler. Mm-hmm. So I, I could do I could do both of those. Um, and they, they the, the name of the company Java's. was MetroWorks, right? MetroWorks Code yes. Warrior. Yeah. Yep, that, that is right. Yeah. Um, I was fascinated by the tool. I like the name Code Warrior. It's a great name. Mm-hmm. First. It and, was a great name. Yeah. It was a pretty good IDE too. Yeah. But it somehow disappeared, I remember. So it was uh I would say around two thousand it just or two thousand and three just disappeared. And um yep. and it, ne- it actually never took uh took off in, in in Germany or Europe. It was unknown like, basically. So J Builder was more pop- popular. J Builder and Semantic Visual Cafe back then, Visual Age for Java. Oh yeah. Yeah, they were very popular. But Code Warrior is uh, they they were more in the embedded space, I think, uh, or C or C plus, but Java was not as popular. They had something I saw them a couple of times in a different area. So it was uh, Assembly or Motorola or something like this. So not 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 Java. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the the Java stuff was there, but it never really felt like it was their their main push. Mm-hmm. Okay. The the embedded C C plus plus yeah. was was definitely what, what they were focused on. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So you got the uh, copy of Code Warrior, and and then you started C or Java. So what? Uh, it, it was C. Okay. We, we were doing C in, in school. Okay, school. Which school was it? Um, it was a, a middle school, and that one. What was that one called? Not bad. That was uh, Oaker Hills Middle School. Middle school is not bad. I mean, C in the middle school is also unusual, or is it? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was definitely a little bit unusual, but I, hey, it worked out, and I was I was interested, and we were we were kind of off to the races on that one. And I, got... I found uh, found some friends that that were also interested in in programming, and that that helped a lot. And you got uh, you got the idea of pointers and the references. <laughs> Uh, I got the idea or I had to slog through it. Yeah. <laughs> one of those two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you like, you like them? Were fascinated by the pointers or you said, okay, this is just, uh, I don't care. Um, the, there were aspects of pointers that, that I thought were interesting. Um, but I also remember there being a lot of, um, a lot of times where they would bite you in the butt. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, I, I forgot to null out my pointers or I had, memory leaks or whatever and why was that and yeah yeah and then then you get into the whole templating thing and inheritance and whatnot and that that was another little mind bend bit yeah still middle school is not um how old were you at the middle school was c 16 18 uh let's see so that would have been eighth and ninth grade um so let's see about 14 14 15 but this is really early for c i would say this is not unusual yeah, these days, at least no, in Germany, I think it works. It was 14, oh, yeah, it's perfect. But with 14 or 15, I think the uh, kids in school will learn, you know, some Scrat Junior or, or um, Lego Mindstorm, something like this, but not C. I cannot, I cannot imagine sure. C. Or, or Basic, or I don't know what is, uh, Blue J or something like this. And you were really into programming or just, you know, you just did because you had to? No, very, very much. I was interested in, in programming. Um, I knew um, right, right about that same time, uh, seventh, eighth grade here in the U.S. Uh, that that's that's what I wanted to do when cool. you know so, when I grew up. Yeah, and which what you wrote actually in Java? So you wrote something you know halfway sophisticated in Java, also beyond Hello World. Um, outside of the book, I ah, I don't remember what I did those early days outside of the book. And C. um, I uh, in in C the there were some some fairly sophisticated stuff in high school we did um we did some acm programming competitions okay uh one of the ones that i remember we were doing um what was that one that was uh optical character recognition so we were doing ocr Not bad. it was kind of the take-home problem on that one <laughs> it's high school yeah so now yeah. I'm, now it, i'm curious what you did at the university you know 
at, uh, at uh, <laughs> university. We, <laughs> so, uh, university was interesting for me. That was um, at, at that point in time. Uh, something yeah, interesting had, happened at, at high school with C or Java, or was just you know OCR and uh, so you were really into programming at high school, or were you just you know so, or how how much time you spend programming a day, roughly one hour, ten minutes? Uh, that day, um, a good hour or two a day. Okay, cool. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I was also able to uh, you know at that at that point in time that was right around. Kind of the tail end of the dot com bust. Yeah. Um. So I, I was actually able to get myself in with a uh, a company that was doing uh, web hosting for local governments, mm -hmm. uh, municipalities. Mm -hmm. So I I'd, I'd, I'd done some of that. You know, I'd gotten some you know quote industry experience unquote okay. uh, on on that one. Um. So I, I'd been doing more web work uh, okay. as as far as that goes. You know, I I did some Perl stuff, which mm -hmm. I try to forget, <laughs> and okay. uh, uh, some PHP. So I, I had some some development experience before uh, before university. And university for me was mostly just um, get the get the piece of paper so that companies will look at me and not think I'm just some idiot kid. Okay, you studied computer science. Yeah, yep, okay. I did. And um, which programming language? C or Java? So what did at the university? Uh, in the uni at uh, the university level, we did uh, we did some Java and we also did some uh, some C sharp. Okay. So pretty much all of the C sharp stuff that I did was all uh, in university. Okay. And so in your leisure, you had you know the 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 time the time or motivation to create something you know beside a school or you just you know try to learn for university. Um, at at the the leisure time at, at that point in time in my life, that was also, well, let's see, that would have been, it would have been before university, mm -hmm. not very, not very long before university, maybe a year. Um, I got introduced to a, um, an open source project called Flyspray, which is a, an open source bug, bug tracker written in PHP. Uh, it's still around today. How it's um, called? And it's called Flyspray. Flyspray. <laughs> yep. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, you can you can look it up. Uh, it's, yeah. it's out there. Um, and I, if if you dig around in the in the source long enough, you'll actually find some of my commits as well. So that, okay. that's where I got started with uh, open source. Was I made uh, started using that, made some commits, um, and uh, cut my teeth on open source with a, a PHP bug tracking system. Yeah. First, uh, I mean, how yep. you got the idea that you can actually commit code to open source? So how, I mean, oh, that would have been, what was the series of events on that one? Um, I started looking at it. I, I, I got interested in that one because it was something that we were using at work mm -hmm. or we needed a, a bug tracker. Maybe that's what it was. We needed a bug tracker at work. Mm -hmm. And of course, no one wanted to pay anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I started looking around and I found this one and found, I don't even think it was a mailing list. I think it was uh I think it was an IRC channel on Freenode. So I found that one, got interested, started talking to the people, um, and then they introduced me to the this idea of um well, I think it was CBS at the time is what they were using. And then they migrated to SVN mm -hmm. and then eventually Git. Um but it was a it was CBS. And they said, Yeah, if, if you're interested or you know you want to make changes, go take a look at this and then go download that thing and and use that and then send us a patch. And it uh you know, it was kind of one thing led to another and mm -hmm. I eventually ended up submitting patches to the the fly spray okay, cool. uh application. Yep. That's interesting because sometimes, you know, if I see if I looked at the open source code, for me it was incredible. So okay, it's mission impossible that I will be able, you know, to contribute something back. So uh this is this was back then my thinking. So this is why it made me curious why how how you got the motivation, the idea that you can actually do this, right? So and, and you were pretty young, I think, back then. So uh, it it was definitely uh, the the first few commits were definitely small, right? You you start off yeah, with something sure, but, but trivial. Still. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, I, I went through the, the the standard learning curve of, hey, I submitted this patch, and then you go back and forth with the the maintainer and said, yeah, this is good. We'd like you to change this, or this doesn't quite match up with what we were looking to do, and and whatnot. Um, but I, I remember them being uh, very supportive. Cool. Um, and I, if I remember right, at least the name anyway. Um, the the guys that I was working with on the the fly spray system, I am almost sure we're based in Europe. Which, okay. uh, looking at it now, I didn't think about it at the time, but looking at, looking at it now, um, probably should have been something fairly um, mind blowing for me. You know, it, it, at that point in time in the the late nineties, um, early two thousands, to be able to collaborate with someone on the other side of the world at that point in time. Should have should have been fairly amazing to me, but I uh, I don't remember it hitting me like that. Yeah, it's still amazing right now, right? So we can talk, you know, oh sure, like yeah. this and uh, and have fun, and uh, probably several thousand, not probably sure, s several thousand miles away, you know. Yep. University. So uh, what you did at university? Something interesting with C and Java, or whatever you did. Probably at other um, programming so languages. C sharp. Yeah. Uh, Java. C sharp was one. Uh, the the big, the the first big project that I worked on on that one. Well, let's see. No, I guess it would have been the second project. So the first project was a, um, a, it was a trivial like auto parts um inventory application that the the teacher wanted us to build, mm -hmm. right? Um, so myself and the and a friend started looking at that and. He was also very interested in C sharp and we were able to get a hold of a, um, an early C sharp 2.0, um, edition. Mm -hmm. And the teacher said, yeah, sure. It's fine. You can use it. <laughs> so we, we actually had to create our own, um, components. Uh, th this was a, um, a WinForms app. So it was all, uh, native windows application. Mm -hmm. And there were some things the, the out of the box stuff didn't give us. So we had to, had to go through and work and figure out how to create our own version of this other uh, widget, mm -hmm. how that all worked. That was interesting. And the the next big project that I think was looking at it now, uh, and even a little bit back then, uh, it was definitely more ambitious than I think what they had originally thought. The idea was to create, um, it was a kind of like a digital uh genealogical scrapbook was, was kind of the idea okay so you'd have pictures audio video you know of um of stuff that you've gotten you know from your grandmother or whatever mm -hmm. you'd scanned pictures that that you would have found in an ad or whatever and you had a way to catalog it mm -hmm. um they wanted to build that whole thing in the course of about oh 10 weeks or so <laughs> from oh. scratch uh which was exceptionally ambitious yeah um I was also introduced at that point in time to the. Was it at school um, at, at the university? Yeah, that was at university. Okay. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Uh, one question uh, regarding C Sharp. What uh, What's yeah. interesting is uh, it seems like you were no, you you like the open source experience with uh, PHP and um, and and you still like C Sharp. So what I remember back then, the Microsoft was not as open right now. And uh, what they tried to do, you know, right. they tried to clone Java, and there was the whole circus with C Sharp. It was almost like a Java clone. So uh, yep. when as .NET started, I say, what they are doing with .NET? We already have Java. You know, what's 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 the problem with that? And and you like C Sharp, so I mean, what was your thinking back then? Um, I I used C Sharp. I don't know if I really liked it more than Java. Um, at, at that point in time, I I was very um. I was a little bit upset with the idea that in the Microsoft realm, and to some degree even that I think that still plays into today, uh, if it wasn't given to you by Microsoft, it was almost like it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, you could you could write your own stuff and whatnot, but there there definitely was not the amount of open source projects available on the .NET platform uh, mm -hmm. as there were the, the Java platform at, at that point in time. And that was one of those things that, that's, that really attracted me to Java, uh, mm -hmm. getting back to it was just how much was out there in the open source and how much you were able to, to you, to give back, to improve, um, and just how much you didn't have to create everything from scratch. Yeah, exactly. So I was, um, I started, I, I, I think, I don't know whether I started earlier than you 
I started uh, with JDK 1.0, actually with Oak and then JDK 1.0 and started with project mm. immediately. And then, you know, .NET came up. And what I remember, I was invited to a German uh, research, uh, how is it called, research organization. And they uh, there was like, you know, .NET and Java. And there was someone from Microsoft and Java. We compared the things. And this was like, uh, you know, we... This was no comparison because what they just had back then at the very early uh, versions, it was the .NET virtual machine and uh, the C Sharp, which was quite primitive at the beginning. So it was uh, like like yeah. Java, but there was, I said, okay, what's the point? Why they just, and they had already Visual J++ and then Sun, you know, sued them. And then they say, okay, then we do something by our own. And now it's a completely different story, of course. C-sharp is a nice language. Yeah. But back then, I, I, I said, why no one sees that? What happens right now? And this is what I yeah. ask, ask, ask you, because you, you had the PHP experience, which was also very open. And then at school, you had to use uh, C-sharp. And what I did, because I was curious about the Microsoft ecosystem, I had to buy the compilers as a student. I remember it. So there was, I got yeah. three boxes, Visual C++, Visual Basic, and the third one I actually forgot. But there was uh, vis um, Visual... Visual C++, Visual Basic, and Visual J++. <laughs> this is what I got. Okay, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, there was a student edition. That, that, that sounds like that was kind of the, the standard package at the time. Yeah. And um, and I, I actually liked that. So I, I, But but then I understood, you know, what, what the difference was. And then C Sharp came out. So there's a, why that? I mean, they, they already had Visual J++. What are they doing with C Sharp? Now? This was, for me, not logical, right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, but this was yeah. you were more or less forced by school to use C sharp, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, it wasn't until later on in the program where you could um, you could kind of decide which track you wanted to go okay. down. They, they had a Java okay. track and they had a, a C plus plus or a, a, a C sharp track. Okay. And there, there were not many of us that chose the Java track. Few here and there, but most people, um, especially since a lot of the the students at that time um, had not been exposed to programming outside of university so that we started with c c sharp um and that's what most people were comfortable with it um at the university so most of them decided to stick on the c sharp track now that's interesting because in europe there was the opposite like everyone wanted to use java and c sharp at the beginning they had really a hard time so this was ah sure uh the the university that, that i went to um they specialized in um in computer programming. It, it's the university is now called uh, Newmont University. Uh, at the point in time, it was called North Face. Uh, and it stayed that way for a little while until the clothing company decided to sue them <laughs> okay. uh, for use of the name. Um, but they had a deal worked out with Microsoft where they, oh, okay. they'd gotten swag and uh, some of the others. Uh, I think they got like a, an MSDN subscription for the school for really okay. cheap or free or something like okay. that. So they, they were really pushing the, the Microsoft way, right? Okay. Okay, got it. So, um, and um, so what you did with Java then at school? And uh, before we, we, we focus on Java, um, the, uh, you know, the journal stuff you built where you collected, you know, the video and, uh, and the pictures um, for, for the family discovery, you know? Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I was can it go successful back to that. in uh, ten, 10 weeks? Um, parts of it were successful. Um, as, as a whole, the, uh, the application was not successful. Uh, the, there was a lot that, that needed to be done, a lot of polish. Um, I might have called it an alpha release now. Okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe an early alpha. Okay. Um, the, the team that I was on, uh, the, I, I guess I kind of headed up that team. Um, we were tasked with doing indexing and searching. Okay. So they'd, uh, they actually introduced me to the Lucene project and it, it was a, a C sharp, um, application we were writing so it was the um the c sharp port of lucene oh mm -hmm. which which was interesting um so i i kind of you know got uh got my hands dirty a little bit with lucene and indexing and how you can crawl pdfs and search images and whatnot with um tika and all that all that fun stuff which uh at that point in time unfortunately there was not a whole lot of porting done mm -hmm. to uh c sharp outside okay. of the the core lucene uh, package. So a lot of it was, all right, well, I guess we've got to build our own kind of thing and see how that 
plays out. <laughs> but uh, the, the search worked. <laughs> that was the one thing that I was very proud of. The rest of the application might not have worked, but search worked. So then you, you were hired by Google, right? After, right after the project. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I was not. So what was your first Java project at the university then? Uh, first Java project, um, that one was actually for the state of Utah, which that, that one's a, that one's an interesting one. So that's, um, that became the first, um, instance that I had ever worked with a JBoss project okay. at that point in time. Which version? Um, three. Uh, it wasn't actually the, uh, the server that they were talking about. They wanted a, uh, a portlet. So they were using JBoss portlet. Okay. Or JBoss portal, rather. JBoss yeah. portal. Um, so we, it, it was, uh, so before summer break, um, we'd gotten into groups and I'd chosen this one to help out the, the state with their, uh, their thing. So they, they gave us some ideas over the summer, you know, to take a look at. And I downloaded JBoss portal and was, uh, playing around with that and, uh, came back for the, uh, the fall semester. And then of course they said, Oh, actually we decided to do something. So, um, what, uh, what we wanted to do, which was another one where I was just going, what do you, what? Um, they wanted us to build, and you're, you're going to get a kick out of this one. They wanted us to build a JDBC wrapper around LDAP. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I remember looking with, at that. With going, SQL support or without SQL support is the question. I, that was my question as well. Okay. <laughs> it's like, what, what do you want us to do on that one? Cause yeah. their idea was, well, our developers understand SQL really well, but they don't understand LDAP very well. And I'd go on LDAP's not that much harder than SQL, but I, okay, sure. Um, and then it very quickly became, what do you want us to support off of this? Cause mm -hmm. the, we're going to have to figure out how to map all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. hey, sure. A select in the table. Fine. Great. But do you want unions? Do you want outer selects, inner selects? I mean, it, it very quickly became that, Oh, well, maybe we didn't quite figure that one all out. Um, so let's look at something else. Yeah. That, that one, uh, that one was a fun one. Um, that was about the same time that, uh, that Java five came out. Java five. Okay. Um, so uh, we were looking at uh, enums for the very first time. Okay. And, uh, re regarding uh, regarding portals. Yeah. So at that time, I did the observation because I was really interested why companies are actually choosing portals and uh, what is actually used in production. So and and the idea of portals was like clear. So you have reusable pieces where you can somehow maintain, but it actually yep. never worked in practice because the problem was you know yep. some. A business department had, you know, to care about the portlets, and this didn't work. But why portals were used at the end was just because of the menu structure. So the the only remaining feature was, you know, That's that you get right. a menu and you can click on the menus. Uh, basically, uh, the routing, I would call it right yeah. now, right? And and yeah. in in one project, they complained that uh, Java is slow and they had to boot the entire stuff, and it takes twenty minutes. It's like this incredible 20 minutes what what happens and they had the portal server and i said okay this is not a java e this is the portal server which runs on on, on java e probably and then yeah. i asked them you know why you why you why you need the portal server and they say yeah just because of the menu structure i say okay just because even if you just use plain gsf it could be faster and then they drop right. the entire server and you know increase everything just you know by forgetting the portals it was not JBoss Portal, uh, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, you mentioned portals. I was curious about that one. So at the end, what do you actually build? You didn't build the LDAP uh, translator. No, sorry, JDBC to LDAP mapper. Right. No, we we ended up um, building a uh, an interface, uh, more more or less a, a library to their. Um, uh, it, in in today's lingo, it would have been more along the lines of a. Um, a client library to a web service. Okay. So an API yeah. to to wrap soap. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh I remember right, I'm pretty sure it was soap. Yeah, sure. Yeah. The whole soap or whole Jackson, w, uh, or the uh, star stuff. Or RPC. Okay. Also seems not like no, it was great soap. fun. It was soap. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, lots of fun. Lots of XML, lots of Je code lots generation. Of to dig into everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And um, this was uh, at the university, right? So it was like... Yes. Okay. So there was a cooperation be between Utah and university. Okay. Um, and the next project? So I suppose this was successful because there's uh, lots of work, but actually trivial, right? So you generate yes. the SOAP interfaces, wrap them with nicer Java interfaces, business delegates, and you are set, I would say. Yep. 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 Uh, the next one off of, after that would have been... Um, we we started getting into because uh, at the time Java EE five um, had just come out, okay. um, so we were all kind of curious to uh, to take a look at that, uh, especially you know coming from where a lot of people had been used to uh, .NET, the the idea of annotations in Java made made a lot of sense for for people. Uh, so we were creating a web application that was a, a JSF mm -hmm. application backed by um, you know, JPA and EJB3 and whatnot, um, to create, um, studio or student, uh, portfolios. Okay. So that you could, you could take a, a digital portfolio with you to, uh, you know, to like job interviews and whatnot. But if, if so you're that, reasonable that, back that then the with Java E5, you could, you could actually create great applications. So I uh, know they sure. could be very thin. You can have, you know, JPA, uh, a very thin EJB3 layer, and then uh, a managed bean with JSF, and and you are set with a view classes. Yeah, no, it, it was it was great. Um, it, it was nice to be able to to take a look at the specs, see what was out there, understand how things worked. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember right, we were using Glassfish for that because uh, I don't. JBoss might have had support at that point in time, um, and at the the university level, you know, it needed to be something that was open source. Because um, we weren't going to shell out the uh, the massive amounts of fees for you know something like WebSphere or WebLogic at yeah. uh, at that point in time. What uh, so we we were using Glassfish at the Java E5 yeah. uh, timeframe. Whitefly had a hard time, so they couldn't catch up. And there there was uh, Whitefly or Jabos, and they had uh, I think the version five was a little bit problematic back then. Yep. Yeah, yeah, AS5. Yeah, yep. and. Um, but but then they caught up and right now it's great. There's almost no difference. But Glassfish was huge and um, what um, I was able to introduce a lots of Glassfish to clients and the reason was a very simple one. Um, this was a reference implementation, so reference impl implementation is already great, which means you know if you follow the specs, it is supposed to work. So it was some um, additional yep. assurance. Plus you could buy commercial support from Sun Microsystems. Say so look. You can start free, but if you like, pay them money and know and leave me alone. <laughs> this was <laughs> yeah, yeah. This great. is uh, this was a this was a great actually a great commercial success. And what I never got from Red Hat, I had already conversations with some managers that there was always a delay between you know the commercial JBoss and Whitefly. So Whitefly was newer, but uh, J J the JBoss was a little bit you know behind. And uh, the problem, yeah. of course, you had more products than just Glassfish. But at that time, at, at Sun Microsystems, you can just, you know, take the open source uh, version and just pay the money and you get support for this, which was a serious. Right. So this was a great, yeah. uh, great concept back then. Okay, uh, use Glassfish. Yeah, that, um, yeah. If I remember the history on that one, that was not too long after the uh, the Red Hat acquisition of, uh, of JBoss. Okay. And the the idea was that um, the community bits and the product bits were not going to be exactly the same. So that okay. there was some um, some production level hardening and whatnot that uh, that had to happen at the application server level, mm -hmm. um, which was the the lag behind uh, community and uh, product yeah. of JBoss and the the open source version. Which is reasonable. I, I meanwhile, I, I think that uh, probably Red Hat takes it more seriously than Sun back then. You know, <laughs> Sun said, "Okay, <laughs> just give <laughs> us the money and ship the bits." Right. And 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 you say, "Okay, um, it's it's impossible because you know this open source moves too fast. If we if you if we give you support, we could we cannot support all the bugs. You know, because if it breaks, what do we do then? So you you need some yeah. have some more rigorous testing, which means you you need more time. So this is natural. But still, you know, the idea that in I think at least in theory should be should be possible that you download Whitefly, go to Red Hat and say, look, I give you money, just support the thing. You know, it could be more right. more money than usual, but there should be a way to do this. That this is what I'm what I'm saying. 
because uh, otherwise, you know, downgrade to do to older version is uh, mission impossible. Right. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, this sounds like fun. And and was your architecture reasonable, or you just you spend time mapping and uh, copying objects with DAOs, DTOs, and more DAOs, abstract DAOs, and uh, data translators, configurators? Um, if I remember right, I don't think we went down that rabbit hole. Um, Steam wasn't. I don't remember Steam being around at that point in time, but um, I. We we were trying to do a lot more of the the managed bean route and okay. more of the um I'm, I'm pretty sure at that point in time you could still inject a uh, an EJB into a managed bean. Yeah, you can. I think mm -hmm. you could. You could. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we we were trying to go down that route. Okay. And if I remember correctly, I think I ended up reading some of the stuff off your blog at uh, at that okay. point in time to to help get up and get up and running. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, someone um, recently on YouTube, someone said, you know, back then I wrote, you know, serious stuff, and now I'm just uh, about the trivial things. And I, I thought about that, and I try not to look. Um, I have all the blog archives, of course, what I wrote. My blog is pretty old, and it was always trivial, you know. <laughs> what I wrote back then is like, you know, uh, <laughs> how to write simple software. I actually never wrote anything really complicated or sophisticated, so um, this was actually interesting. Then I wrote back, actually, you are right, but uh, it my so level of sophistication, you know, never changed. It's <laughs> always the same, always base level. <laughs> Just, you know, take right. the simple stuff and sh uh, show that it actually is working. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. and, and the next one? So then you... The next project with Java. Um, then the then the next project. Uh, let's see, so next project would have been um, probably after university, because uh, that that would have been just before I graduated. Okay, and uh, what and then you I did got after involved. university? This is the uh, after part. university. After university, I got involved in a company uh, locally here in in uh, Salt Lake called OC Tanner, and they they were very heavily a a, a Java shop. Mm -hmm. um, they had uh, now th this one might take you back. They had a lot of ATG components that, oh, uh, that they were using with JHTML, yeah, ATG ATG Dynamo, right? Yep, yep. That that was it. Yeah, that was it. Yep. Uh, so we we were doing that um, for a while, and then there uh, there was a greenfield project that I got involved with that uh, was doing a lot of um, essentially. ETL and um, mm -hmm. data validation stuff. Okay. Now, now uh, it could so I was be, able to dig my teeth Now it into could that. be sold as big data, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pr probably. Yeah. Um, probably. Uh, I I was able to to uh, dig into that. We we ended up using um, Steam on the front end with uh, Java E5, uh, all running on JBoss, mm -hmm. and to uh, to kick off the validations because there there were. I don't know, probably 20 or 30 validations that uh, that we had to write. And we wanted to do them as, as quickly as possible, right? So we wanted to run uh, as many things in tandem as possible. So we tools. ended up using, uh, we did not use drools. Okay. That, that would have been a, a good idea, <laughs> okay. but we did not. Um, we we kicked off the, the validation step using uh, JMS. Okay. So we just, we just fired off a bunch of messages and we had a listener that would pick stuff up off the queue and then run it as uh, as it came down. That's already interesting because if you there was a delay between you know what's coming about okay this was ETLs as asynchronous anyway so it doesn't matter right. So right. you so you store you, you stored you know the document or whatever it was then the validation were asynchronous so after a time you saw whether it is valid or invalid and then you get notified yep. validation completed just you know pick up your stuff. Okay. Yep, that's that's exactly what it was. Yeah, and that that one was a that was a, a success. The uh, the project or the not the project, but the the software we were replacing with that one, um, the the largest file that we had. So what uh, what we were doing, we would take the the list of employees, uh, OC Tanner at, at that point in time, and to some degree still, um, they were a uh, uh, years of service milestone uh, recognition company. So we, okay. we take the, the list of employees, um, run it, run some validations, you know, make sure you didn't have any circular references in your hierarchy or remove people, add people, 
um, based on the quarterly reports or whatever that, that we got, find out how long someone had been had been working for the company and then basically had a flag that said, oh, yeah, they, they hit their their five year milestone or their 10 year milestone, whatever it was. Um, so that the original system, the largest file that we had um, would take, I think it would, then it took like a day run all of those validations and why the the company are, are, are doing this you know to find out whether someone was tenured to the company to send him a golden watch or what, what yeah yeah that, that was that was okay. pretty much what it was right okay, so okay. You, you'd get some sort of recognition uh, oh, okay. plaque, a watch oh, something okay. like that yeah okay. yep yeah. um so we we took the the largest file which took a, a day to run on the old process and we brought that down to about an hour and a half cool mm -hmm. so that that was that was a big win um, for us. And we also got to play around with Seam and some, some new technologies. We were using rich faces, uh, on the front end. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was, that was some fun stuff. That was great. That was the first introduction that I had to, um, to Seam. And things went, to, things went from there. Um, we started using Seam and some other projects there at OC Tanner. Um, and then I ended up, uh, leaving OC Tanner after about three years. I followed my manager to a, uh, a mortgage company, mm -hmm. uh, which at that point in time, we were using Seam as well. I stayed there for about a year. Um, and in, in about that, the year that I was there at the mortgage company, um, I started getting more and more interested in, uh, in Seam and seeing if I could help out. And uh, I remember talking to Pete Muir and Dan Allen, some of the other guys that were on the Seam team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I started helping out. Um, uh, I became good friends with Dan over his, uh, his Seaman action book. Okay. That, uh, that was published by Manning. Mm -hmm. Um, got to know Dan from that. Um, kind of, kind of sort of did a tech review, uh, on that book, answered a bunch of questions on the Java Ranch <laughs> okay. for that. Um, they, they are still around and then, Java Ranch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I actually answered questions for the, uh, the book that Alex and Andy and I wrote, uh, a few years ago. That one was called, um, testing, testing microservices in Java. Mm -hmm. So they, they did, uh, they did another one of those, um, book giveaways, you know, ask the authors questions kind of thing and we'll give away the book. Um, so, uh, I, Started looking more in, into Steam and what was going on there. And one thing led to another. And that at one point in time, Dan had messaged me and said, would you be interested in a position? We had a, a job rec open up. And I said, sure. Can I start yesterday? <laughs> kind of thing. Okay. Um, so they, uh, they offered me the position at, uh, at Red Hat joining the Steam team. And that was, um, about nine years ago. A little nine bit more years, than nine ago. years ago. Time flies. Yep. It's incredible. It does. It does. And, and, and you spent time maintaining C? Uh, I did for a while. Yep. And until, uh, until it went the way of the Dodo. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, I kind of bounced around internally at, uh, at Red Hat for a little bit. And also Seam Solder, you know, the, the Solder extensions. Yeah. Okay. This was also, yep. okay. And no, then, I, I remember those quite a bit. Yeah. And, and then, we, we donated those to, um, to the Apache Foundation mm -hmm. and that became, uh, Apache Delta Spike. Exactly. Uh, so, and after the donation, you quit, quit the position or you just... Um, I helped out with Delta Spike for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the Seam team kind of disbanded. And I ended up working on the uh, what eventually became the Red Hat developer um, program. Okay, cool. it, it was originally the, uh, the JBoss developer framework. And it became the JBoss developer program. And then that morphed into the Red Hat developer program. Okay. One question oh. about Delta Spike and Sim Solder. So they were great sure. ideas, but for me it was not enough to use it in projects. The problem back then was with Java 6 or Java 7, they were so powerful that for me, you know, just just picking one utility was not a the, the win was not that big, right? So I observed the Delta Spike, but there was never like a killer feature where I really w wanted to use that, right? So this was sure. uh, yeah. So, um, and now they are, yeah, it, it, yeah. um, I, I'm out of touch with Delta spike, uh, a little bit, but, uh, it, at least when, when we, um, had donated it and then we, we ended up working with the, uh, the Cody guys as well mm -hmm. and the, the open web beams team, 
Mm-hmm. Um, it ended up kind of becoming a, a, a hodgepodge of um, CDI portable extensions. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, I don't, I don't really remember there being a killer feature. Um, the, there were things that since that point in time have kind of become the groundwork for some other things like the, um, uh, what's now micro profile config. Yeah. A lot of those ideas came out of, uh, Apache Delta Spike. Yeah. Um, I think to some degree, some of the security stuff, mm-hmm. um, especially the, um, the annotations based security stuff mm-hmm. came out of Seam and Delta Spike. Um, now for Seam, they, they came more, yeah. right? Because from Seam, this in and out, uh, the, the, the dependency injection came from Seam. A seam and yes. then was replaced with the Rod Johnson's idea with the, you know, at inject. So it was yep. mer- merged afterwards. But I re- remember the origin, I think Java 6 spec, there was in out and uh, this mm-hmm. by ejection or how it's called. This was like. Uh, yeah, yeah, by ejection. By ejection. That's what it was called. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And uh, and then it was replaced by the standard uh, proposed by the, actually by the Spring guys and Rod Johnson. In, in, and I think Rod uh, created the entire spec in six to 12 weeks in very short amount of time. The, um, what yeah. was the, the, the spec without spec? the spec? With spec without yeah. the PDF, right? Um, yep. But yep. uh, the amazing thing is, you know, that the Java Java six community said back then, okay, then we'll take you know the standard, and they replaced their, their own Seam dependency injection with uh, a Spring's one. And, and the funny yep. stuff is uh, now it is not that popular at Spring the at inject. <laughs> 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 yeah. So they have different annotations right now. So um, okay, cool. Um, so what you did? That, uh, okay, what do you mean? What it means that you are you joined the Red Hat developer program. So what you did then? Were you manager or? Um, no, I was, um, I, I've stayed away from the, the manager track. I, I'm a, I'm an engineer at heart. That's yeah. what I'd like to do for, uh, for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I, I ended up, uh, doing mostly, uh, web work. So it was, uh, some, some web, some website stuff. Okay. Uh, a little bit of backend stuff here and there, but mostly it was, uh, website stuff. So, so you provided the infrastructure for the program, right? You yeah okay cool okay nice um and now I mean Red Hat so the infrastructure was done what you did afterwards so um uh, after that the uh, the Red Hat developer program has gone through um a couple of different incarnations uh using different backend technologies uh currently it's it's using Drupal and I was intr- instrumental in getting that uh getting that all done uh before. Uh, before Drupal, it was using a, uh, a project called Ostruct, which is a it's a Ruby based static site generator. Mm-hmm. Um, so I maintained that for a while. Okay. Um, and so you moved then, away from Java. Yeah, yeah, I did move away from Java and did some Ruby stuff for a while. How you so, enjoyed the experience? So from Java to Ruby. Some things I really enjoyed. Other things not as much. Um, kind of the the freedom of getting away from types. Uh, I think is a kind of a double edged sword. Yeah. Um, we, I, we've kind of seen that a little bit in, in Java 8 with the, the var care, uh, keyword, right? So it, I don't have to completely statically define the type, but the, the compiler can infer it mm-hmm. at build time. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, just a little bit less verbose, a little less pomp and circumstance boilerplate. Mm-hmm. Um, the expressiveness of Ruby I found to be very nice mm-hmm. and, also, surprisingly enough, coming from a uh, a Japanese developer, it reads as English very well, which yeah. is something that I always found very very handy. Um, almost every language that that I pick up now, I always ask if there's a a uh, an until loop, uh, which is kind of like the an inverse while loop, mm-hmm. which is always always nice to to mm-hmm. to see, and it's it's easy to read, you know, until this condition's met, do this. Instead of the while not true, do that thing. Um, it's just, it, you know, it's uh, syntactically, it, it's just nicer to read. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy the um, the Ruby ecosystem. The, there are a lot of things there in Ruby that uh, that I do like. Uh, monkey patching yeah, can be great. <laughs> it can come and bite you back. Um, I never really got into Rails though, uh, so Rails was not something something that I did. It was all core Ruby stuff. Why well, I'm asking because I remember it was around JDK 1.1, so 1997, 1998, or early mm-hmm. 2000. 
um, I worked with a developer and he said, you know, you have to, to look at Jython. This is like Python and this is the, ah. you know, great programming language. I was like, but, you know, Java is just okay. I mean, I'm very happy with Java and really productive. I, I cannot imagine, you know, with Jython, I, I get even more productive. And it's a great story with Java back then. It was the IDE support. Everything was there. So I was really happy, right? And um, yeah. and uh, a few years later, the same happened, but with more impact. It was Rails and uh, Ruby. So I got, you know, constantly yeah. asked on conferences why I'm doing Java. It will die. We should know everyone was just about <laughs> Ruby and Rails, but really everyone. Right, and that, that, so, was, uh, that was back in the, the early 2000s, right? Java's going to die. Java's going to die. Uh, ja no, this, this was... 2006, seven, and eight. I remember this because there were some okay. conferences here in uh, in Europe, and I met you know the uh, also speakers from US, and everyone was just about Ruby. I was one of the few you know who just talk about Java, and, and the others say you are crazy, and everything was Ruby. And I say okay, and and, yeah. and now what what I see, Ruby almost disappeared. So um, it, I mean, no, no one talks about Ruby anymore. So this is my observation at least as I, sure. I mean it completely disappeared from from view and and this is actually what always you know if i ask myself how it's possible that 10 years ago everyone was full into ruby full gas ruby and java is that right and then right. now no one talks about ruby i would at least if this is really that great i would expect at least you know some some excitement about Ruby and what I hear you know, um, uh, around the web developers, legacy Ruby, and you know they try to port everything away from Ruby. So I mean, for them, is Ruby like the complete legacy right now? Which, which sure. for me is really, really interesting to observe. You know, and now yeah. it's the same yeah. with Kotlin. Everyone has to use Scala. I've, I've kept you know Scala. The the only thing which yeah. was partially reasonable was Groovy because you could start like you know. Like with Java, it was identical Java and then enhanced from from, from this. So it's okay, we can do it like script or bin shell or something like this. And um, yeah. so I get every a few years, everyone asks me why I'm not doing the language, you know, X. And until I look at X, it disappears. So this is <laughs> so it's actually a good strategy to stick with Java. It actually survived. Uh, it's amazing, right? Yeah. No. It, yep. Here we here we are, twenty twenty five years after after yeah. it came out, and still going strong. Okay, cool. And, there and, are not uh, not a lot of the uh, the enterprisey languages that uh, that can really say that. You know, C and C plus plus stuck around for a long time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, what, what I see right but now, you don't see you don't see a lot of those other ones. You know, yeah. Cold Fusion is pretty much dead. Delphi you don't see anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, what I observe a little bit, C plus plus gets a little bit more traction, so at least more interest. So I hear from time to time C plus plus, but Ruby just don't hear anything python a little bit right now because of you know um ai and uh, and stuff like that so uh, sure. more more um uh, more discussion around python but ruby just disappeared so this is why i ask you, you know what was your opinion about ruby? I, I still i still see ruby um from time to time in the um in the startup area okay. um i still see a lot of people using it to uh get like an mvp off the ground very quickly mm -hmm. um and then once Inevitably, they they hit um, some sort of barrier with Ruby, whether it's a, a scale issue or or something else, and they'll have to look at uh, at porting it to something else. But I still see it being used quite heavily in the let's get up and running really quick kind okay. kind of idea. Okay, at Red Hat. So after your Ruby experience and Drupal experience, what happened then? In one point, you started uh, with Java so again, or yep. Um, D. So that would have that is. Basically caught me up to where I'm at right now. Um, yep, I'm back, back to Java stuff. Um, uh, I am doing some, some stuff with, uh, ASCII doc, um, some internal tools for, uh, for ASCII doc for our documentation writers and, um, also Quarkus. So yep. I, I'm helping out with some of the Quarkus stuff. ASCII doc um, is Allison. actually actually great for 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 the listeners. So ASCII doc is like um, Markdown, but with better support for tables, for instance, right? <laughs> you know that is funny that you say that. Um, on the uh, the Gitter, it was uh, Friday actually. We we were talking about this this very thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny how every time you end up talking about ASCII doc, it's always well, it's like Markup, but it's better, <laughs> yeah. or it's like Markdown. It's yeah. like Markdown, but it's better. Um, ASCII doc is a, uh, it's a human readable, um, wiki syntax for writing, um, semantic 
uh, text. Yeah, but ASCII doc is Markdown compatible, right? Uh, some of the things are yes, some yes. of it no. Because I've wrote documentation with ASCII doc, and I used that because of tables, and sure. uh, it was Markdown almost. So I was really cautious not to to use too much of ASCII doc, and um, I think I, I I generated PDF or something and PDF and HTML at the same time. And there's yeah. also amazing uh, amount of Ruby going on in ASCII doc, right? Yes, uh, the the ASCII doctor project, which is the kind of the um, where where all of the innovations happening right now, um, is all done in uh, in Ruby. Mm -hmm. Dan Allen maintains that one. Uh, the core ASCII doctor is done in in Ruby. Mm -hmm. Then there is a transpiled um, JavaScript version, which is the Ruby thing transpiled into JavaScript. And then there is ASCII doctor J. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm kind of the, the grandfather of that one, um, okay. is basically a, uh, a Java wrapper around the Ruby stuff run on top of JRuby. Okay. And uh, is it fully functional? So I can just pick the JRuby? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. So you are maintaining still JRuby in your leisure or at work? I, no, uh, not not much. Um, no, not JRuby. I mean the JRuby portion of ASCII doc. Oh, sorry. The, oh, ASCII doc. J, J. No. No. Oh, no. So and, and then no, no, I'm I'm not. And what do you mentioned, Quarkus? Yes. Uh, yep. Uh, so I, I'm helping out with the the Quarkus stuff. Um, Alex Soto and I uh, are writing a uh, a book, book on Quarkus that should be out um, in uh, August. That's mm -hmm. coming from O'Reilly. Mm -hmm. uh, so Quarkus, if uh, for the the listeners, if you're not familiar with it, wait it a second is... before before you promote your book, which we already promoted. But um, how you got from Drupal? To Quarkus. Um, Quarkus came out One and a half last year. Yeah. Yep. Uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and it, it was the there was less and less I was doing on on the Drupal side. Uh, it it became more of a a maintenance thing okay. as opposed to full on uh, Drupal development. So I was looking for something else to uh, to work on um, as well as the the Drupal stuff. And Quarkus was uh, was picking up steam as they were getting near their, their 1.0 release. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I started looking at that and seeing what, uh, what needed help over there. Okay, cool. And I mean, okay. So what did it committed code again, or just, you know, cared about, you know, the backend stuff or developer relations or evangelism. So uh, a little bit of all of the above, actually. Um, I had some, had some code that, that I've committed so far. I'd like to do some more. Uh, did some documentation stuff. Which areas? Um, what you committed? So, uh... um, so the the stuff that I uh, have committed to date has been around the uh, the data source integration. Okay. Yeah. So you can um, you can connect to um, one or more data sources uh, using JDBC, uh, and it's all native um, native image compatible. I don't know. And there's, um, I think, uh, still a. Uh... A PR or bug? What uh, we had a problem to have two data sources at the same time. Is that still open? I think it was open six to eight weeks ago. And uh, oh, interesting. We've Maybe wrote, it's a new bug then. Yeah, we wrote a workaround where we maintained the entity manager and connections by ourselves. So we injected, mm. you know, from outside the connection. But yeah, and um, yeah, it was open. I would say April, May, something, May, something like this. April, late April of this year? for sure. And uh, yeah, so nice. Okay, to yeah, for that a might be a new bug then. Yeah. Okay. So as you spend a lot of time with Quarkus extensions, I assume, right? Uh, I haven't written my own Quarkus extension yet. Um, that's one of those things on the to-do list. Okay. Um, it it also seems a little intimidating, to be completely honest. But there's a there's a lot to it, uh, especially if you want to get it all working um, in a uh, native compatible way yeah so you have to expose you have to know what you will need in advance in order to do this yeah to, that's yeah. the challenge i would say okay cool sure. so, so you, yep. you 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 work with the data sources and uh you also care about documentation and stuff around right yep yep so, stuff so around now, the documentation the uh evangelism yeah now how you got the idea to write the book um the uh, the book idea actually came from alex um, okay. Alex had uh, had tapped me on the shoulder since we worked together on the uh, the testing Java microsystems book. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted to 
he wanted to do a, a, a Quarkus book. And, uh, the, the last book worked out fairly well, uh, together. And of course, since Alex is not a, a native English speaker, mm-hmm. um, the, uh, the publishers want another native English speaker to kind of help co-author that and make sure everything works in English and okay. blah, blah, blah. So we, uh, we decided to join forces again and, and write another book. Okay, uh, cool. the, that one was, um, was definitely ambitious. We started, started that back in, um, you September. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was October, October, September, October of last year. And we have, uh, we have everything done. Um, right now it's in the, the copy editing stage right now and it should be out in, in August. So we've basically written a, uh, a book. It's a cookbook version. Yeah. Um, and a great uh, one. But, uh, I'm reading it as, oh, as well you. right now. <laughs> oh, excellent. Thanks. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd say give us some feedback. We're, uh, we're a little past the, <laughs> the point in time where we can make major changes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, uh, that was a, a very ambitious book. We, we were hoping to get it out earlier this year. Um, but due to, uh, kind of the whole publishing process that uh, it wasn't able to happen until uh, just a couple of months from now. So it mm-hmm. should be out in August. Exactly. It's a cookbook. What are your favorite recipes? Or uh, Out of world? that one? Oh, um, favorite recipes off that. Um, the Kubernetes ones are very cool. Yeah. The, because they are not obvious, um, right? That yes. You can actually write, yeah. you know, uh, Kubernetes, um, not extensions, how it's called, um, operators. Uh, with yep. uh, Quarkus. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Um, and then I also really enjoy. Now, now you're asking me. Now I've got to remember what made it into the book and what <laughs> what didn't. Um, I, I also enjoy the the persistence ones, mm-hmm. partly because I wrote the persistence ones. Um, Very but good. Also, so I think data um, sources are also involved, right, in the book. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I and and you'll notice the. Uh, the recipes that, that I ended up contributing on on that book, I, I've tried to make a little bit more in depth than just the uh, the basic simple use cases. Okay, that, that's always been something that I've found to be um, frustrating when, whenever I pick up a, a new technology. Right, you go take a look at it, and very quickly you can see, oh hey, you can get up and running. You've got hello world in five minutes. Okay, that's great. Uh, and then you go a little bit farther, and that that works really well. And then especially in the, the enterprise use case, you very quickly go from A to B to now I need to go to Z, mm-hmm. but your tutorial doesn't take me there. Yep. So how, how do I fill in the, the rest of the alphabet? Um, what's, what's my roadmap look like? Um, so any of the stuff that I've tried to do, I've tried to make at least a little bit more um, in depth so that there, there's at least a little bit more of a, a real world use case and, and kind of help you flesh out how to do um, slightly more complicated things. So um, I would like to invite you back, you know, and speak about this and your work with Quarkus more in depth. That'd be great. Yeah. Sure. And uh, where people can find you on the internet, your book, and, uh, oh, I forgot the most important question, of course. Is this book written in, with ASCII doc? Uh, yes, it is most definitely written in ASCII doc. Very yep. good. Mm-hmm. And you, oh. you had to negotiate something with the O'Reilly? guys or nope. it worked out of the box um o'reilly has been using ascii doc um or it i should say it's been an option for their authors um okay. for probably about oh uh, three or four years i think mm-hmm. okay cool yep so what's the point is in the internet so give me some links uh so you can find me at uh at github uh, my username on github is lightguard l-i-g-h-t why that A-R-D. why why this name <laughs> Um, so, uh, going back to gaming, right? Ah, okay. Uh, light guard was the, the name that I had all the way back in the Diablo one days. Ah, okay. So that, that was, uh, that was my character name in Diablo one days and I've stuck with it for a very long time. And, and it's also nice whenever I go and sign up for something that's, uh, my username is typically light guard JP. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I discovered that light guard was taken for some things. Um, but light guard JP was not. Okay. So it's it's nice to be able to go and if I fill in a username and the user's already taken, then I go, oh crap, I've already signed up for this somewhere. Where's the where's the forgot password uh, button? Um, okay. So most uh, most of the places you can find me is like our JP. You can okay. find me that way on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, GitHub is like guard, and um, you can find me on Facebook. That one is not like guard, I don't think. Okay. Uh, oh, you can also find me on LinkedIn as well. Okay, 
you're perfect. So thank you a lot. And uh, yeah. yeah, and and hear you in, in future. Sure thing. It'd be great.